Now we've arrived at the main event. I specifically left Triple H versus Daniel Bryan alone because as big as that match is, it serves another role as a launching pad. As things currently stand, the winner will go on to face Randy Orton and Batista in a triple threat match for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship in the main event of WrestleMania 30. Of course, our predictions on the main event depend on our predictions for the singles match that will precede it. So, we're going to discuss the entire title picture as a whole. Yeah, I'm going to predict that Daniel Bryan and Triple H are going to have their match, and it's going to be a pretty good to great match. But something is going to happen at the end that's going to force either Triple H or Stephanie to in, to make the main event a fatal four-way rather than a, the triple threat that's scheduled as of this point. Triple H and Daniel Bryan have been a much-needed shot in the arm of a main event scene for WrestleMania that was in dire need of it. I think that the smart thing for them to do would be to take advantage of that and insert both of them into the title picture at the same time. Uh, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and pick Triple H to come up on top, and then he and Daniel Bryan will have their, uh, not rematch, but you know, return match at the next pay-per-view where Daniel Bryan will then win the title. I think Triple H probably is going to end up pinning either Batista or, well, probably Batista. So there are a lot of different ways this Daniel Bryan Triple H match could go. There's clearly the scenario of the running knee. Triple H puts his foot on the rope. Referee misses it. Give them the opportunity to put both guys in the main event. It also gives the opportunity for Triple H to not have to lose Daniel Bryan. So that's like real. So that's always a good thing for Triple H. At the end of the day, I'm going to stick with a very simplistic and obvious choice here. Triple H is going to pedigree the shit out of that dude. And then going to win the title in the main event. Um, just simple, straightforward. We're going to do the shield Versus, uh, even though this doesn't go with my previous pick of the last match, but they're going to do the Shield versus Triple H feud, and Roman Reigns is going to beat Triple H for the title at SummerSlam. <laughs> well then, <laughs> uh, well, I guess I'll be that guy to choose Daniel Bryan to win this, I guess. I don't know why you guys are choosing Triple H. It just doesn't seem... I just don't believe it, and you guys just... You no. Know. But overall, this build-up has been very good, especially that Triple H... Like beating and destroying Danny Bryan, like still, I look back on that and it was an amazing segment. So the build has been good. Danny Bryan got uh, he came back on Raw, got some offense in, pretty much cleaned house. So that's good. Danny Bryan's looking good. Uh, hopefully he does something on SmackDown as well. Um, Danny Bryan's gonna win. That's just my opinion. I don't want to say fatal four way. I just want Danny Bryan to win. So Danny Bryan's gonna win this. I reckon this is gonna be match of the night. Just Danny Bryan versus Triple H. I'm just gonna say that. And then we're going to have the triple threat match where maybe Triple H will come back out or something and do some sort of disturbance or sort of interfere or something. Overall, Danny Bryan's going to overcome all the odds and we're going to have that. Uh, I don't know how many people the stadium holds, but we're going to have like a giant yes chant at the end and WrestleMania. And it's going to be great. The bill for this feud has been the saving grace of the road to WrestleMania. It hasn't just been good. It's been fucking amazing. And that's in no thanks to Batista or Orton. It's all for the story that has been told between Triple H and Daniel Bryan. And Triple H, we have such a compelling character and a refreshingly legit heel that isn't interested in being cool. He's like, I'm gonna go back years digging up dirt on myself because you're gonna fucking hate me. You are gonna hate me. And on that point, that video, that quote unquote burial video was fucking awesome. I loved it, every single second of it. And you know, evidence right there. It's been wildly successful. He's provided great foil to Daniel Bryan. And in the leader of the Yes Movement himself, we have a face that's organically grown in popularity. He's legitimately positioned as an underdog that has been screwed over time and time again. And he finally has the opportunity to get a shot at his crowning moment. Everything that has happened to him makes me feel as if I kind of have like a stake and Daniel Bryan and him finally achieving success. But first, he has to go through the person responsible for screwing him over in the first place. For months, you all know if you're a regular listener of PWTR, I've been begging for Triple H versus Daniel Bryan to happen at WrestleMania, specifically for the purpose of Daniel Bryan defeating Triple H. And now that the match is a reality, I don't know if that's exactly what I want. 
Because as far as I'm concerned, neither guy can afford to lose in this match. They've dominated the build of this world title match to such a great extent that I honestly can't see a scenario where both guys aren't in the main event. So here's what I think is going to happen. There's going to be some kind of screwy finish where you call into question the winner of the Triple H versus Daniel Bryan match to the point where we're forced to have both of those guys added to the main event. Then it becomes a fatal four-way and there... I believe the person walking out of WrestleMania 30 as a WWE World Heavyweight Champion will be Daniel Bryan. And the way that they remedy the situation with the Triple H and Daniel Bryan match, I believe Daniel Bryan is going to win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship by pinning Triple H in the main event. I mean, that's the ideal scenario, but I think we all agree that the winner or the participants in general in the Triple H Daniel Bryan match are going to be the ones that walk out with the title ultimately. Oh, definitely. Oh yeah, under there is no circumstance in which I can see especially Randy Orton, but even Batista at this point, there's still that kind of glimmer of hope because you kind of wonder like what really were the terms of the contract coming back and you know, he wins the rumble and there's still that kind of thing there, but I think either of those guys at this point winning would be nothing short of shocking, and that is in no way a good thing. We are not Vince Russo booking this show. So I will cool down the, you know, shock value train, and let's go with the sensible storytelling train. You know, shock value to me would be Triple H winning. How? Let's just – Triple H, he comes from a winning pedigree. Okay, let's just put it like that. And to I me, I will never there. be surprised – at the idea of Triple H winning a match. He's just won too many matches. He's just too good. He's just the game. You know, when, you, when you've reached the pinnacle whereby you are just that much of a winner and you were just that good in that ring and you just have achieved so much success, then it's never shocking that you win a match. You know, it's kind of like he's at the point of Hulk Hogan where you're just never surprised that Hulk Hogan wins a match. That's the same point. You know, your sarcasm is like cheap cologne right now. It is choking the hell out of me. It really is. You literally sit there and act like you'd be surprised if Triple H won. I would be. I seriously would be surprised if Triple H won. Because it just seems as if it is Daniel Bryan's moment. And I know we've said that many times before, but I just can't shake this feeling that this is going to be the time where it happens. Like I can clearly see the stage set because this kind of ties up everything all of this stuff about Danny Bryan being a b-plus player by the way you notice Triple H hasn't called him that in a long while hmm and no, he called somebody else that he called he compared him to Fandango he did not compare him to Fandango the situation there he was not delivering a commentary on Fandango he was delivering a commentary on the crowd and their fickleness he said he said he was a great talent, a solid B plus, maybe someday maybe, even an A. Maybe even an A. But Therefore, what does that have to do with his thoughts on Daniel Bryan, though? Daniel Bryan is currently a solid B plus. But Triple H didn't specifically say Daniel Bryan was a solid B plus. Read between the lines, Jay. I don't have to. Sometimes read you have to put lines. some thought into the show. Okay, sometimes you no, have to put your brain to work. No, no. Sometimes you have to stop looking for things to complain about with Triple H. I'm not. He did not say he was a B plus. The story here is that at one point Triple H did think Danny Bryan was a B plus. As many times as he's fucking called Danny Bryan a solid B plus, do you really think he would have a problem with doing it in this case? Like we wouldn't need to read into it. He would have specifically said it if that's what he meant. Okay. I can buy that, but you know, because it will only enhance his win at WrestleMania. So that's what's happening. I'm telling you right now, I'll damn near guarantee he ain't pinning Triple H at WrestleMania. There's no way. Like, dinner's on I'll, me at SummerSlam. I'll guarantee he is. All right. So if Daniel Bryan pins Triple H, I will personally pick up the tab at, some, at the first dinner at SummerSlam. I have exquisite taste, too. So I don't no care that you fucking McDonald's. Do. Yes. We will go straight. I don't, I don't know. You said that place was in the ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no McDonald's. But seriously, I I I do believe Daniel Bryan is going to pin Triple H at WrestleMania because it would just tie up everything perfectly in the main event. Yeah, it it can't happen in 
the Triple H versus Daniel Bryan match because as much as I begged for that match, I'm not going to necessarily say it's an afterthought. It's necessary for us to see Daniel Bryan versus Triple H at WrestleMania, but there's a bigger moment to be created because we were sitting here and we were kind of wondering like, what is there for Daniel Bryan to achieve if he defeats Triple H in that match? I think it was you, Brandon, who asked the question because you made it seem as if him defeating Triple H was the biggest thing that he could possibly do at WrestleMania. That Yeah, after that baiting, yes. <laughs> Yeah, since that isn't the main event, it can't happen in that match, but it still needs to happen at WrestleMania. What other option do we have? See, you should have already done it then. I, I don't like the idea of a, a clusterfuck no finish to the match that you most anticipate to WrestleMania. Like, if you were going to do that, they should have already had a match in which they were both added to it. And he, Well, to avoid that, you want to know something else that I was thinking of? And this would be terrible. This will be a terrible option, but it did pop in my mind. Triple H has been going around saying that he is the most powerful man in WWE. Him lose and put himself in the match anyway? That could be an option. Or, how about he defeats Danny Ryan in the first match, and then the true most powerful man in WWE puts him in the main event? See, that would work too. Because yeah, that would bad. make it so Daniel Bryan can win the world heavyweight title and Triple H doesn't have to put him over. But, but Everybody of course, wins. Everybody have, wins. Uh, Triple H is going to win by a screw finish, right, though, if that's going to be the case. <laughs> See, becomes, I, was, I, 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 I was thinking about Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about that because it would be kind of weird where yeah. it's like, it's kind of like even Steven, but still, at that point, it's not necessarily even Steven because they trade wins over each other, but only one of them walks away with the title. Or they could be dicks and like have a run in and just get them both disqualified. Like that, that'd be terrible, but they could do that. <laughs> <laughs> you really are a Triple H fan because you were looking for every reasonable way to make sure that he does not have to just put him over a straight one on one. I mean, it's going to be pretty difficult for Daniel Bryan to pin Triple H when Triple H is walking out with those belts. <laughs> no, because it's not about me trying to protect Triple H. It's about me trying to create the greatest moment possible for Daniel Bryan. I have his best interest at heart. Well, you're well, certainly I'm, not doing a very good job of it. Well, well, How I'm, am I not <laughs> pinning Triple H for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship? The person that told just you lost you to him. No, but that he, wasn't he loses my, and then oh poor poor Daniel Bryan. Poor that you. was not my idea. He, I was just throwing that out there as a possibility. Here comes here comes Vince McMahon with all his heartfelt pity, and he's going to just put Daniel Bryan in the match anyway because he's such a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> that was not my opinion. I was just throwing out a possibility. It doesn't make it so, any more stupid. <laughs> You Not said it would be a stupid. good idea. No. Oh, you were being sarcastic there. I forgot. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm choking on your sarcasm. <laughs> I think Danny Bryan just has to beat Triple H, then win the tiles in the triple threat. I mean, that, that's to make the the best kind of Danny Bryan moment. Not the best, but it, it, it's just uh, he needs to win Brandon, both. Brandon, because... Brandon, where does the part come in where Triple H gets his win? <laughs> He doesn't. That's what I'm saying. Triple H is just going to have to bite his you, tongue you know this what? one. You are an asshole, Mark. You are. 